A swan song has been in the water for quite a few months now and I'm pleased to say everything has been finished. So it's time to do a walk through from stern to the bow and right through the interior. So let's go. This is Swan Song, a 10 metre Roger Hill design displacement catamaran which has a 4.6 metre beam. Construction is a foam core laminated with epoxied fiberglass. Sitting proudly on the back of the boat is a pair of 115 horsepower Honda 4 strokes. Quiet, efficient and equipped with fly-by-wire controls. In the transom we have on the right hand side here a fuel filter for the um, port engine and I also stow some um, rod holders in here. I'll show you how I fit those on shortly. On the starboard side, in another sealed off compartment, is the filter for the other engine, along with spare hydraulic steering oil and the top up kit. And in the centre, all the fishing gear. So spare lines, soft baits, sinkers, all the uh, various paraphernalia that you need for fishing. I was told I wasn't allowed any fishing gear past the door into the saloon. So uh, it's quite tidy, all kept out the back, so easy to, ex easy to um, access. These rod holders go in the side here, they just drop into here. lock them and they can be pivoted up and down or if you want them out to the side you can go like that or straight over the back. The freezer consumes 360 watts of power over 24 hours which is less than 2 amps average and it has a 92 litre capacity and that is all we need for an extended coastal cruise. The freezer is down underneath, so air gets drawn in here and it can go right through and exits up there. And in the same area we have the, just through this bulkhead, are the four batteries, so they get ventilated as well. So we have a short power connection there and down below it is the DC uh, outlet for electric reels, spotlights, anything like that. And on the other side, there's a couple of them. Above that, we have a switch panel, and these relate to the circuits that are sort of aft of this bulkhead. So we have the uh, wash down to turn it on, the fishing lights, which I'll uh, show later. Um, yeah, the ceiling lights, underwater lights, exterior light, and the freezer. These C-Zone switches, you can set it up so you can turn the freezer on here or on one of the panels up the front. In the uh, port lazarette, we have, not a lot, a um, bit of cleaning gear there, hose fittings. Um, what we're looking at there is the um, DC hot water cylinder. and the pressure tank for the um, water system and there's the fresh water pump behind it. But in the starboard lazarette I keep fishing rods, fish bins, net, um, burly pots, cleaning gear and you can see the outlet for the um, fuel, the filler and the breather and the uh, outlet to the engines. Down the back, we have uh, seven rods here, sort of uh, stowed, stay out of the way of the uh, bins. 
not the ideal setup but uh, I'd really prefer a proper rod locker but we don't have the length anywhere to do it. One of the features on this boat are, are the uh, steps going from the cockpit up to the side deck so we have a rail on the left a grab rail on the cabin top on the right so you feel very secure as we go forward and we'll have a look at the anchor the anchoring system so we have the um, Lone Star drum winch drain hole at the bottom there, very generous area down here, we could probably store a few bits and pieces in there if we wanted to but at this stage there hasn't been a need so we have a roller set up here to uh, help spread the rope across the drum as it's pulled in you'll notice that there's a stainless steel what would you call it, a loop, a bow on the front of the fair lead. Uh, I didn't have that originally and um, I had to come up with it fairly quickly because this happened. The other hatch on the foredeck is simply stowage, fenders, portable bilge pump and the likes. You're actually looking down on the top of the black water tank. Right, you would have noticed that we've only got one windscreen wiper and uh, five sections to the windscreen and it's a bit of an experiment at the moment um, up until now I've had no issues with visibility when I'm down at the helm when there's water coming onto the screen or it's raining but uh, I'll monitor it over the coming summer and if necessary I'll put a wiper on each side so we'll have three but at this stage it's not an issue on the cabin top we have 750 watts of solar panels, the Fleur night vision camera and the VHF aerial. Because the boat is under 12 meters, we have a white all-round light that also serves as the anchor light. Right, there is a generous entry to the saloon, double door folds back. And on the port side we have the galley. We uh, opted for drawers rather than cupboards as it uh, keeps everything tidier. Things don't, don't um, flop around so much. Right, under the galley bench we have a fridge, 130 litres, and it also includes an ice box. And um, the way it's set up here, we've got the plates, dessert plates, cups, glasses, wine glasses and so on, set up on the uh, rear of the bench, which gives easy access. You don't have to go rummaging around in drawers to uh, get your plates out. The cooking on board is done with AC power. So we have a electric jug and a coffee maker and double outlet plug. That's the only one on the boat by the way. So when we're cooking we go to the bottom drawer here if you get in here and we can take out the induction cooker and stick it on the bench we use this little rice cooker, uh, cooking rice or it's actually very useful if you put it on the high heat you can use it for cooking up a few vegetables. Right. A lot of the time it's easier to have salad mind you because it's summertime and it's hot and then we have the fry pan fits on that easily. How do you manage with just one cooker? With one just, cooking element. With just the one cooking element, I could easily put this little saucepan out, 
partly cook the vegetables, cook the side dish, and that can just sit there. Pop this on, cook the fish, and if need be the air, just swap over, give it a reheat. But we find it works really well for us, having this as a backup one as well. Okay, well, we've had the boat in the water for quite a few months now, and the lowest the percentage of battery um, power available has ever been is what about 70 percent I think that was one morning after cooking the night before having lights on um, doing breakfast boiling a jug and uh, when you consider the capacity of these um, lithium batteries it sort of hardly scratched the surface so it's working well On the uh, starboard side we have a fire extinguisher down there by the door. There is another one down the bottom of the steps over there. Somewhere, there it is. And aft on the bulkhead there we have a uh, EPIRB. Easy reach. And a lovely crafted table out of American cherry. Two helm seats, at the moment I've got them down facing the table, so of course when we're moving along we spin them around, you can raise or lower them. Um, that folds out if you're sitting on it, if you want to stand at the helm, push it back up. As far as the dash is concerned we have the, um, the Honda controls here, they're uh, fly-by-wire. So they're very smooth, they have synchro on them, so you can set it up so that both motors are running at the same revs, or you can have it as two levers controlling each engine separately. Keep a spare torch there, and we don't have built-in speakers on this boat. We have a little boom box, which works brilliantly. I can take it out in the cockpit when I'm fishing, or take it down below into one of the cabins and um, we have the typical Honda ignition the um, trim port starboard starts and stop VHF radio and the C zone switch panels and we have a couple of DC outlets here USB and another one on that side And up here we have the um, wiper, self-parking. If you want to um, wash your windscreen, just push that. And um, the washer is connected to the fresh water system, so it's under pressure all the time. So there's just a solenoid in the system down the back here. So when I push that button, it opens a solenoid and the normal fresh water pressure takes over and sprays water that way you're not filling up um, canisters of water all the time. Let's get that off. A right. couple of ray, 12 inch ray marine screens, so generally speaking I'd have one on the um, on the chart, set for the chart, and you can see these charts nowadays are quite incredible because it's almost as though you're looking from above and they've taken the water away, so you can see the deeper parts of the channel, shallower parts, and that's the, uh, the little island, or the big island, just out to the side here. And when you get out in the open ocean, it shows you every nook and cranny, every reef, and uh, like I say, it's as though the water's not even there. And of course the um, depth sounder, sonar, whatever you want to call it. The Garmin produce the uh, controls for the Honda engine, so it's quite a typical display. And we have the BMS, battery management system. At the moment you can see that the solar power is putting in 520 watts. And this is the Raymarine autopilot control. And across on the left here is the anchor up down. To one side we have a double switch panel, these are C-Zone switches which are programmed from a computer, so 
as I said out there, you've got saloon lights here and you can also turn them on from the cockpit switch panel. All right, let's go down below. So we have steps going down to port. Good grab rail to hold on to. And at the bottom, if we go forward, we have the, the head, proper term for it. So there's a shower, vanity, soap dispenser, fancy sink, and there's a cupboard under as well to store toothpaste and the likes. And above it, towels, and um, there's still a lot of storage space in there, so could be blankets, anything. And the head. And of course there's a mirror which always makes it difficult when you're trying to video because you get to be looking at yourself. A couple of tower rails. And the shower area here we have a drain. And of course just through the next bulkhead there there's a uh, pump out for it. Going aft, we have what I describe as a three-quarter berth. So your feet go down right under the end there and uh, it's quite comfortable. And inside here we stow life jackets and storage for whatever. Side shelf, throw your phone on it. And uh, just going off tack a little bit, if we come through here, these are three of the five C-Zone modules that all the electrical loads are connected to. These three aft ones relate mostly to the circuits installed aft of the saloon bulkhead. Okay, let's move to the starboard hull. We go aft and we have another three-quarter berth, same as on the port side. The only other feature in this cabin is that the electrical and electronic stuff is stored here, which is under the seat that you see in the saloon. So going forward, we have the master cabin. What I really like about this is that you have access from both sides of the beds. So we have side cabinets, drawer each side, and storage over there. That cupboard there is quite large actually. You can store blankets and personal possessions. In this forward cupboard, stows as strange as it may seem a spare anchor as well there are spare life jackets and of course personal gear lastly let's see how a tender hangs off the stern the removable davits are dropped into their holders and the tender is secured with traditional rope pulleys Jam cleats allow progressive raising and lowering. Well, that's the walkthrough completed. Now let's look at performance. I'm well satisfied with the craft's very smooth motion underway. Though I've yet to test her in heavier seas. That's planned for the next video when we do a shakedown cruise off the coast. But for now, let's check out the economy data. On a slack tide, we recorded speed and economy at 200 rev increments. Okay, T2 is 9.1 and 1 1.2. 2.4, 9.5, 1.2. Let's see how this data looks on a chart. This shows litres of fuel per nautical mile at increasing revs. The flat section below the arrow 
from about 2,800 to 3,600 shows a steady economy of 1.6 litres per nautical mile. Looking at this on the next chart, it shows speed increasing from about 10 knots up to 16 knots with no apparent change in economy. In the conditions when this trial took place, it seems that engine revs of around 3,500, 3,600 would be a great cruising speed. Of course, sea conditions and boat loadings will definitely affect this data. Note that this trial took place in calm conditions, fuel tanks were full and the water tanks at about 15%. One last trial, let's check out its fishability and nighttime navigation with an evening snapper fish down the harbour. Come here. Oh, it's a good one. Yes, you are. Right. Oh. <laughs> Give me that. Look at that. That's what I like. We're actually fishing in about yeah, 1.2 meter meters of water, that's about six feet of water. And what time of night? Oh, the sun's just gone down. There we go. Yes, the fishability of this cat has proved to be excellent. Our evening fish was very successful with half a dozen snapper gracing the bin. Before we headed to an overnight anchorage, guided by an ultra clear electronic chart, the sonar, and the night vision display. All that work of the last 16 months was most certainly worthwhile. At the anchorage, the underwater lights lit up the back of the boat effectively. Though I do look forward to testing them in the clear water offshore. Next time on Building Swan Song, we do a 15 nautical mile cruise there and back to a dormant volcanic island that last erupted over 6,000 years ago. That's all for today folks. See you next week. Make sure to like and subscribe.